Okay, and if you go further over here, oh no, sorry, it's, it defaults like this actually when you see the thing. But I have dragged this output over here because you can drag these rows to wherever you like. Yeah. You have an output for every row as well. Now at the moment they're all set to default, which is the default. Uh -huh. And back here, our default is the RMF. Okay, but you can mix and match drum machines within a, within a pattern. So um, I'm going to show you that now. Okay, now we've got our RMF installed. I'll select the arrow key, highlight all these notes, and hit delete. And they've all gone. Let's just go back and look at our VST instruments. There's our RMF. I didn't have to do that actually. I could have just clicked this button here, and it opens the RMF because it's the default um, device assigned to this track. Okay, so here's our drum box, RMF. There's our, our sounds, 909 kick, a snare drum, a clap, a loop, a clap, and a hi-hat. Very simple. Now at the moment, any notes I put in on this map are going to play out of the default output, which is the RMF. Okay, so let's put in a kick drum beat. Well, first I'm going to bring up the transport part and just assign this to something like 90 BPM. Now I do that by double clicking on the tempo till it goes blue and then just typing in 90. Okay, let's centre the grid, put the cursor in the middle and just zoom in or out and it centres the grid. Okay, so with everything set to default out, so that every row here is going to the RMF, and the in note and out net note here is set to C1. Okay, my RMF has a 909 kick drum on C1, so I'll just get the drumstick tool here. Now my acoustic feedback icon is here, my speaker icon. That means if I click with it off, I don't hear any notes. If I click on a row that's assigned to a sound, but with it in, I hear a kick or a snare or whatever. Shut that bloody loop up! Right, so, to make this easier uh, for what we're seeing, before I do that, I'm going to drag this output row across to here. And then just close this back up like that. Okay, so, everything is currently assigned to the RMF. So I'll put in a kick drum and a snare. I can rename that as snare. Okay. And then, boom. Right, and that give me a sort of basic hip hop beat. Ah, but wait. This thing is still bloody playing this this bass part we had going earlier. Let's mute that. Go back to this track and this part. Let's get the damn thing centered again. It is irritating the way Cubase continually defaults to not be centered like that. But hey, whatever. Can't have everything in life. Right, here we go. So I've got a 909 kick, followed by a snare. And they're all playing on default, which is the RMF. I can put in a clap, call that clap. I'll call it clap RMF, actually, because I'm going to show you something in a minute. I'll call this snare RMF as well. And here's my closed hi-hat. Yeah. Now I could, I've got to put in a basic tap, 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 tap hi-hat pattern. This is currently set to 16 and the global quantize is switched off. But let me assign this to 8 and then that way I can just hold down with the left mouse with the drumstick and drag it across and it'll put in 8 notes. Much quicker than click, leave a gap click, leave a back click. So there's me basic hip-hop drum beat, you know, slow school. Now you might think, okay, what can we do now? Well, I'll show you a little thing you can do with drum map. We just move this down out of the way, the transport bar. Because, think about it, if you can assign an output to every row, you can mix and match drum machines within the same pattern. So let's close this. Go to our devices, VST instruments. And let's open another drum box. I'm going to choose the LM7 because you'll all have it using Cubase. There it is. I'll choose the 909 kit. And we have a clap. Whoops. There. Okay. Close that down. Go back into my MIDI 
pattern, drum pattern. And let's have the clap playing, not from the RMF, but from the uh, RM7, so, uh, LM7. So I set this to LM7 instead of the default, which is the RMF. And let's look at what note number it is. Let's let it play. I'll solo it using the solo button, right? And we'll just hear this row. Right, at the moment it's playing the nasty, horrible, flabby 909 snare on D1. Um, if I go to the out note set to D1, let's change that to D sharp 1. Oops, not tilde, D sharp 1. Now it's playing a clap. So we'll change this to clap LM7, was it? Something like that. I forgot what the damn thing's called now. Hang on. VST Instruments. Yeah, LM7. Okay, so we've got a clap playing the LM7. And it's on... Let's just highlight it so that row solos. It's, on, it's playing out on D-sharp 1, which means it's playing the clap. The in note is currently set to D1. So if I went to our, my master keyboard and hit D1, I would trigger this clap, right? And... Um, it's going out on the output row here to LM7. All the others are set to default, so they're playing the RMF, but I could manually assign it to the RMF, which I'll do to make it more obvious what's going on here. And the hi-hat is also here an RMF, right? Take the solo off. Yeah. And now we have got a pattern playing the RMF and the LM7 claps all at the same time. But, hey, we can go even further. Let's bring a synth into the equation. Um, we've still got back here this synth, the monologue synth, the basic synth, which we're using um, to show examples when we're doing the key editor uh, tutorial, right? And it's still playing. If I mute the drum part I've just created in this, you can hear it's playing some nasty kind of square wavy bass sound. Now let's just open that monologue, go into my devices, VST instruments, open the monologue and I have created a low double square wave, square wave kind of bassy sounding patch, a boomy patch yeah? and I'm going to load that up. Uh, boom kick bass decay, I'll put this so you can download it and load it into your monologue. I just wanted to do it this way so I wouldn't spend time in this tutorial actually creating the sound. But basically it's, it's a pair of square waves and with a very low cutoff and hardly any resonance and it just creates this sound. Yeah? That's the sound played by these two notes in the key editor which are set quite high at G sharp, uh, G3 and A3. So you get kind of boomy square wavy sound, right? Let's mute that track again open up our drum track, go back into the part that we've created now. Let's choose a note like D2, something not too low and not too high, and we'll call this boom kick. Okay, now it's not actually a kick, it's a synth playing a booming sound. Well it doesn't sound like a boom when it's played up at G3, but you play it lower down, put in a note there, All right? and assign the output here, the output row, to monologue and if I solo that, let's hear it. Right, very hard to hear because it's a low volume, but if I, a uh, low pitch, but if I put the pitch up to D3, hear it? Boom! Right, put it back down to D2 so it's just playing a sub, a sort of subby bass tone and it's quite hard to hear that. Um, but if I then bring in the rest of the kit okay, and put in a and put in a monologue boom to accompany every kick drum up here pl being played by 909. Yeah? Can you hear that? I'll just mute it. Okay, this is the mute column here. Yeah, I'll just mute it. Right, that's without it. And you've got the 909 kick. But bring it back in. Oh yeah. 
and you get the 909 kick being reinforced by this decaying, booming monologue synth sound. 